So in the previous lesson, we learned how to add menus. And in this lesson, we're going to be looking at how to add additional users. And so the first question you're probably asking is, why would you ever want to add additional users to your website? And so there's a number of reasons why you may want to do that. Um, the first being maybe if you want to add the course or if you want to um, have subscribers or additional editors. For example, if you have guest bloggers or if you have a multi-author blog, there's many reasons why you would potentially want to have additional users. And I'm going to show you exactly how to add those different users, uh, specifically what are the different user roles? Because I think that's the most important part and why I wanted to make this specific lesson is that actually adding the users is not difficult at all, but kind of specifying what these different user roles are is actually extremely important because you want to restrict or grant certain types of access to different people. So the first thing that we're going to be talking about is simply user roles. And so what are the different user roles? And we'll see that there's five different types of user roles. Um, there's a, a sixth one, but we won't go into that one because it's not as common. But the, the five that we'll look at are administrator, an editor, an author, a contributor, and a subscriber. And I'll actually show you where that may be uh, once we get to it. But first, let me just talk about what each of them are. And the first being the administrator role. Uh, so the administrator role is what you actually will have once you first sign up for uh, your WordPress website is gaining access to everything. So literally anything that you would want to do, making any changes to your website, adding new posts, adding new pages, anything like that, that would be having, you have to have the administrator access, right? And we'll contrast that to the editor where all he can do is, he or she can do is publish and manage posts. And so the difference between the administrator and the editor is uh, with the administrator, you can you know add plugin, change the actual um, HTML of your theme, uh, change different aspects of your website that the editor wouldn't be allowed to. Editor is simply just you can imagine kind of like in a newspaper, it's the one who's actually editing the articles, making sure that they actually are in fact good, making small changes, writing their own articles, and eventually publishing um, all of these articles. And you're probably, if you look down at the third one, which is author, what is the difference between editor and author? I think that's the most, um, you know, kind of the hardest one to distinguish between. Uh, but really, it's quite simple is that an author, they can publish and they manage posts. However, um, in the editor role, they publish and manage posts. It seems like it's exactly the same. But in the author, they're only managing their own posts. So you can't edit any posts of um, you know what that somebody else wrote right you can only edit your own posts and you can imagine kind of in the same newspaper role um, you know you have just a writer a typical writer a journalist they're going to be editing their own articles but they won't be able to edit other people's articles that's not really their role um, so that's why you have an editor versus an author um, contributor is for example say you have a guest post and you can do guest posts in a variety of ways. You can either just accept them through email, you can accept them kind of through a contact form, or you can actually have them actually sign up. Maybe if they're a regular contributor, um, they can sign up in the back end of WordPress and actually have an account with you where they can write articles and send them to you. And the difference with that is that they can actually publish it. So nothing that they write will ever go live until either the author, the editor, or the administrator uh, makes that public and they actually published the article. So that's kind of the difference between the contributor and the above three. And the final role is the subscriber role and I think that the best way to actually explain what the subscriber role is is by actually showing you how we utilize that on our website. And so one of the one of the ways that you can use the subscriber role is for example say they want to subscribe to your actual blog and they want to gain access to certain content or they want access to a course, something that they have to actually log into. But you don't want them to actually be able to edit or add anything to the website. They just want to be able to read kind of more password sensitive or user sensitive data, right? In our case, how we use the subscriber role is in our free WordPress course. And so this is a free web WordPress course that you can sign up. Um, and really all they do is they register uh, for a free account and they put their email, username, and password. And so we have a test account right now. And so when they log in, they have this login right here. And when they log in, they'll gain access to actual course. And so we're in the process of making it right now. But if you can imagine, this, this WordPress course is what they can, they can track kind of their progress along the way. So they can actually take this course 
um, and there'll be a total of I don't know how many lessons but um, they can take this course and gain access to everything and it can track each of their every individual's progress right so for example we'll take the first one uh, hopefully it's ready uh, but yeah if we if there's a video here they can mark it as complete right and so when they mark it as complete then it, they can actually see that their progress has been uh, completed and they actually have finished this particular lesson right so it's a typical course that you would have um, and it allows people to, to track their progress so that's one way that you can use the subscriber role it allows you to really gain access and to kind of track individual progress or simply just get, give them access um, because they need a password or something like that right so the subscriber role is probably more generalized of what most people would generally use the subscriber role rather than the editor or the author or the contributor right those type of things is mainly if you have more than one individual writing for your blog or working on your website things like that generally you're just gonna have an administrator and a bunch of subscribers kind of subscribers are kind of like blog subscribers things like that right so now that we actually have described what each of these are the next thing that we're going to be looking at is actually how do we even add a new user right how do we add these new users and also user roles so what we're going to do is in our left uh, this is in the back end of WordPress we're probably pretty familiar with this we're just going to go into users and we're going to click on it and it's going to show uh, this menu right here this um, window right here and we'll see that the only user that is on this website right now uh, this is our demo website is uh, the test account that we have or the, the main administrator role account that we have right so when we want to add a new uh, user what we're going to do is we're simply just going to fill out all the details right it really does not uh, matter uh, generally it's going to send you an email to actually confirm uh, for example you can make a password right here um, and you can send this this password to whatever email you have and so it generally should all be you know factual data we're just putting kind of uh, example data obviously it's not test at gmail.com and you just say what type of role they want for example if you wanted to make an actual um, editor somebody who is going to be actually editing um, posts that other people write right obviously if you have an editor you're probably going to have some type of contributor as well uh, so yeah let's just say we have an editor all we're simply going to do is we're going to add this new user. It'll send them the, the account details, the username and password. And we'll see that now we have a new user. And it's an editor, right? So now they can log in through the back end of WordPress. And remember, all the logins are at yourdomain.com slash wp-admin. Uh, and they can just log in there. And what they'll have that's a little bit different from what you'll have um, is that they won't see all of these options. So let's, let's actually see what they'll see. Um, so if we'll log in like that and we'll log in hopefully it doesn't yeah so it should work uh, without an email confirmation but you can see there's a lot there's a lot less options that they can choose from right they can edit comments uh, they can uh, add pages they can add posts they can add new media which are pictures and things like that um, and they can change their own profile but as you notice they, they can't have any access to actual the theme or the plugins or anything like that right all they can add are just basic posts and pages and whatever is attributed with that like comments and media right so um, I think that the ability to kind of restrict access on this type of level is very very important for a website especially if you bring on more individuals in the future and that's one thing that WordPress does very well and so in the next lesson what we're going to be looking at is actually uh, search engine optimization or SEO essentials and I'm no SEO expert so it's just gonna be kind of the basics that you need to know as uh, a new WordPress blogger right what type of tools would you use I kind of showed you some of the plugins in the past uh, but yeah we'll just look at kind of the very basics of search engine optimization